Okay, how Libri and MS works. Now this is not really a how-to video, but more of a general overview of the basic concepts of Libri and MS and how the developers went around of kind of building this and the building blocks for this. Because if you go on the forums and read it long enough, you'll see that really the same question gets asked every single day almost. And it's basically... I've added a device in here, and I'm missing, like, the icon, I don't see the processor, I don't see the memory, I'm missing a bunch of stuff. It doesn't look all nice and neat uh, as this HP switch here. Um, or they have it, and it detected it, but there might be some stats missing. And actually, I went on Reddit, and I saw that somebody asked that same exact question. You can add custom OIDs in here to monitor custom things, but he might have, like, 50 of these devices, and he doesn't want to really go in here and create each one of these OIDs every single time. Whereas when you add a device into Libri and MS, somebody already went through the trouble of programming this and making all these things pop up in here in the correct places. Uh, so whereas he had all these... Um, custom OIDs in here, they would actually be showing up under the states right here, uh, all along here. Or, or there's fans, there's just a couple other uh, different boxes you can have in here. Uh, but in general, I wanted to go over kind of how that all worked, because uh, a lot of people have these same questions. They're like, why is it not in here? How can I get it in here? Um, I, I want to add support for a new device that's not really recognized at all, uh, and, and just how we go about uh, that whole process of, of doing that. So if you know that when we really, when we start off with Libri MS, we don't really have anything in here. Um, all this stuff gets filled out as soon as we add a device, you know, these ports and health sensors and everything else. That all starts when we add a device. And the very first thing uh, it does when you add a device, it tries to figure out what the OS of this device is. And when we say operating system, what we're really actually saying is just a set of MIBs that this device uh, supports. Um, so generally, operating systems uh, all use the same MIB files. Uh, you know, Windows, uh, it doesn't matter what Windows machine or, or Linux machine or Ubuntu machine you're on, they're all going to uh, act the same in regards to SNMP. They're usually going to respond back with the same stuff. Now, there's some caveats to that, obviously, but for generally, for the most part, you know, if, if I have a Cisco switch or let's say this example, an HP switch, this is just an 8-port PoE switch, but a 24-port PoE switch, a 48-port PoE switch, they're all going to act the same. Uh, they're all going to be responding with the same sensors in the same locations. So that's why we want to determine the OS. Is The very first thing we do when we add a device, we determine the OS because we need to, we need to start filling out all these sensors. We need to start gathering all this information, and where you go to get this information in SNMP changes per operating system. Uh, so we have to figure that out first before we can go any further. And the way they do that is they actually have these uh, definition files here. Yes, uh, Librium MS include definitions. Now these are going to be all the OS's that Librium MS currently supports. So if you added a device and it's all blank and you see like a default icon, it's because somebody hasn't gone in here and created an OS for this yet. And you can click on any one of these and you can actually see how this is some BDCOM software. I don't know what this is, but in any case, it's determined it's this kind of software when it reads this value from the sys object ID. So the very first thing, assuming you have your community strings right and Librium MS can talk to uh, the device over SNMP, uh, the very first thing it does is is try to grab this information here and see what it is. Like it'll grab the sys object ID. I think it grabs a couple of values right off the bat all the time. And these are standard values that hopefully every uh, SNMP device supports. Now, that's not obviously true. Uh, some devices don't respond back with some of this stuff, but we have other ways of figuring it out. But it, most devices will respond back with uh, simple stuff like this, like the sys description or sys object ID. And from that, we can say if it responds back with this, we know that it's a VDCOM uh, software. Uh, like here's a brother printer, you know. For this one, they're actually 
doing a sys description. So the sys description, and they're doing some regex on it, uh, figuring out uh, that if it says brother and C and some other stuff in here under the sys description, uh, that it's going to respond back as a brother printer. Now, you keep in mind is that if you have a brother printer and you put it in Librium MS and it didn't detect as a brother printer, it's most likely because your printer, for whatever reason, is not responding back with this. Uh, and that could change. That not be, might not be any fault to your own. It could be just that the firmware has changed or, you know, Brother has millions of printers out there. So, you know, who knows what they did. Uh, they're the only ones that are going to know. Um, so we kind of have to just build based on trial and error. You know, if they come out with a new firmware and we see it changed, yeah, well, it's going to break everybody until somebody goes in here and uh, fixes this. So um, luckily it's not too difficult to see uh, how these things kind of work. Uh, so you just have to go through here and find it. But now, if you did discover your OS, um, it discovered fine. You have the icons in here, but now you're missing some sensors. Well, that's in this next folder up here called uh, Discovery. And so what this does is once it determines the OS, now it can actually start and um, looking at the sensors and stuff in it. Uh, now, I think you do CPU and memory in a different location, but this is mostly all the other stuff. Fan speeds, power supplies. In fact, you can see it all right here in the Librium MS docs. Uh, if you go over there, you can see that I mean, airflow, uh, charge percentage, cooling, count is a big one. You're always using this. Uh, current, you know, there's just tons of different uh, sensors that we can alert on. Um, and, you know, every device is a little different. You know, the sensors in a wireless access point are going to be different than the sensors in a switch, are going to be different than the sensors in a firewall. Uh, it, uh, you know, from a UPS to a printer, <laughs> it's just, you know, they're all going to be different. So uh, they give you a bunch of options here. On what to grab but in any case if we went in here um, we can find a uh, we can find let's do this one this is an apex multiplexer that I actually put in here um, so this basically is telling you um, like if I when I figure out that this is an apex uh, I want to figure out the fan speed the current the voltage the temperature and I'm telling it that if you go to this location if you ask this device at this location it's going to respond back with the P power supply fan status um, and uh, you know if I look at this one it's going to supply the current of the power supplies uh, the voltage of the power supplies and and really this index is a, just a number you would see like one two three four five here and really all it is is just saying this number dot one is the first power supply this number dot two is the second dot three and so on and you know for power supplies you might not have that many but for like here temperature sensors uh, you might have a couple uh, and you just have to kind of go through this and th this is a lot of uh, you need like a mib browser you need to get the MIBs, first of all, from the vendor, and then you need to start walking those MIBs with like a MIB browser and kind of figure out what stats you can get from it. Because, to be honest, you don't know this, what they're going to, even though the device, like in the web GUI, can t sometimes show you a lot of status, SNMP sometimes won't report that status, and that's typically on the vendor. Uh, there's nothing we can really do about it if they don't give it to us by SNMP. Uh, they should, but they don't a lot of the times, or they'll give it to us in some weird format that we can't decipher, or we really can't do anything with and it just doesn't make any sense uh so you know a lot of the times it's not even so much that um you know we can't get this information is that they present us in a way that is so difficult for us to figure out how to get into here um, i've had to do some really really clever uh things in here in order to get sensors to work correctly uh it, it, that's not always the case but you know sometimes you'll run into a problem where it's just uh why did you do it that way come on couldn't you do something else but anyways, uh, so if you're ever missing a sensor, you can go through in here and, you know, this is it's pretty much the same thing over and over again. So you just need to copy this and kind of figure out which each one of these values do, do, does and uh, go from there. So there's other things in here like wireless sensors uh, that, that you can also go through. And this gets into a little bit more of PHP. Um, but 
if you're interested in any of this, you really should read through this whole support for a new OS section here. Um, I think I've read through it like four or five times uh, when I was adding my first couple OSs. And uh, yeah, it's very helpful. Uh, I mean, I learned a lot of PHP from this and just a ton, a ton of information on just how the real inner workings of uh, Librium MS worked. Uh, so if you're interested at all in how, how it's getting all this information, definitely read through these documents. They're just uh, so well put together. And I was just amazed that I could actually get something that looks like this uh, from when it was not. I, when I first added, and actually I did all the Ruckus wireless, when I was adding Ruckus wireless stuff in here, it just was blank. It doesn't it didn't have the icons, it didn't have anything. Uh, and I just went through and I got like wireless client counts, uh, all sorts of different sensors uh, on these uh, access points and stuff. So uh, yeah, you just got to keep on going through it and uh, eventually it'll click. But um, yeah, for simple things like just a missing fan sensor, that shouldn't be too hard to, to, to put in there. Now, I, I plan on doing a whole video on just creating an OS from scratch and all the process in order to do that. I don't actually have any devices uh, with me that can I, that are not supported by Librian MS. So if anybody out there wants me to write one for them, uh, I would be happy to do it as long as I can uh, record over it and kind of go through the process. So uh, just give me a message if you're interested in that. Um, I think that's kind of what I'm going to stop with now um, for for um, for this part of it because uh, I, I really just want to link this video to people who post stuff like this because they're like, I have all these OIDs. How do I get them over here? I'm like, well, you do that in this file. You got to figure out. He didn't say what OS he was on, so I don't know. But, you know, you just got to go into one of these files and, you know, whatever sensor he was looking for, or fan speed or something, he has to create this in here. Uh, and now every single device he adds will read this and put it in there for him. Now, I will say that if you're going to go through all this trouble and do this and it works well for you, uh, figure out how you can get Git working and put a pull request into the actual base because everybody benefits when you get this stuff working. I mean, there's so many devices out there. There's so much stuff changing. Vendors are always changing stuff and tweaking stuff. And, you know, I can go back through stuff that's been in here for years and just find stuff that I could actually even tweak. Um, maybe it's not worth it my time to do that. I, I would if I had more time. But, uh, yeah, it, there's always stuff to tweak and always stuff to maybe make a little bit better. So, definitely. Definitely, if you go through the trouble of um, getting all this working, put a pull request in. And all that information is still in here on how to do all that. So I think I'll end it uh, right there, and uh, I'll go more into actually supporting a new OS uh, if I ever get a device, uh, my hands on a device to do that. Thanks again for watching.